Natalia Gavrilovich is notably former Prime Minister of her country. Thank you very much for joining us, Madam Prime Minister. How important is it for you that this summit is taking place in your country? This is a historic event for the country and indeed a very strong signal of support for Moldova and Ukraine in these difficult times. Uh, it's for the first time that Moldova ho hosts such a summit and it addressed issues that are very dear uh, to us, very important for our development, uh, security, energy, connectivity, and it allowed uh, for bilateral meetings uh, that will uh, hopefully result in uh, unity and support uh, in the future as well. Indeed, Chief, among those bilateral meetings, of course, uh, the discussion between your president and uh, the president of Ukraine. Uh, again, how important is that relationship? How important is that mutual support? Indeed, as President Sandu said, um, uh, we recognize that Moldova has currently peace due to the bravery uh, and the sacrifice of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, and uh, our relationship with Ukraine is very important so that we can ensure security and stability in the region as much as we can. Um, here, I want to say that uh, we are striving not only to be beneficiaries of security, but also providers of security. Uh, and uh, we are working very closely uh, with Ukraine on border security, on combating um, uh, illegal uh, traffic, but also on very positive issues like cooperation on European integration, cooperation in the area of education, in the area of culture. Uh, so uh, this is a very uh, profound and content field uh, relationship in this difficult time. Moldovans, of course, rose to the occasion and received the highest number of refugees per capita uh, when uh, um, uh, the, when they were fleeing the war uh, in February last year. Uh, and uh, this uh, showed a lot of solidarity of different parts of the society. And it showed that the Moldovan people uh, do uh, have uh, European values, do share these uh, uh, values of solidarity and unity and uh, are willing to do the work for it. President Sandu is saying that the path for her country, for your country, uh, to the EU is irreversible. Is that very much how you feel? Indeed, uh, we saw just last week in Chisinau uh, an extraordinary, massive rally, historic rally. We haven't seen such rallies since uh, Moldova became independent in 1991. Uh, so uh, these, all these people came out on the streets and said, uh, Moldova is Europe and Moldovans are Europeans. Uh, and this is because uh, in the last presidential elections, in the last parliamentary elections, the people have voted uh, for a model of development that is based on European values and European uh, way of life, that is based on rule of law, uh, good governance, uh, prosperity that is based on freedom, democracy, uh, and the respect of human rights. So. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this, this has been a theme uh, politically, socially, and uh, I think uh, this war uh, made it absolutely irreversible. And, uh, you know, we are seeing people change their opinions, uh, even about uh, neutrality, which is enshrined in the Constitution. And we had um, a growth in uh, the number of people who support uh, uh, integration into NATO, for example. This is uh, quite a way uh, away from Moldova, but we are seeing that um, people understand that now this is a civilizational choice and uh, they have made it clear uh, how, where do they want to go. So you're saying that your country would be willing to follow the same path as Sweden, Finland, and basically taking sides? Uh, Moldova uh, has the, the neutrality principle enshrined in the Constitution, and this principle was um, included or provided in the Constitution in 1994 as a way of saying we are not accepting foreign troops on our territory. And of course, we have Russian troops that are illegally stationed uh, in the Transnistrian uh, region, in the separatist region, um, which, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, in the art, in the um, uh, report, the yeah. explanation in the report, yeah. uh, is uh, de facto has 
um, uh, independence. And uh, even in 1999, uh, Russia has committed internationally to withdraw the troops, but we have seen that it is not sticking to its commitments. And I think more and more people are realizing that neutrality is neither helping us to um, convince uh, the Russian Federation to withdraw the troops, nor is it helping us to keep uh, stability and security in the country. Um, we are a small country and we need uh, our friends to um, fight alongside us, to be, to support us. Uh, and uh, uh, we very much uh, uh, are looking towards a, re a renewed way of uh, uh, ensuring that uh, our people are safe and live in peace. Madam Prime Minister, it's not that long ago that there was a story which we covered here in France 24 about how there was a, a kind of Russian uh, plot to uh, subvert and destabilize your country, which was exposed by staging, holding this summit in your country. Again, you're sending a strong message to Russia. Indeed, we have been uh, in a hybrid war or we have seen elements of hybrid war with the Russian Federation for a long time. And I'm talking here about meddling in the political process and in elections. I'm talking here about uh, disinformation and propaganda. I'm talking here about cybersecurity threats. Um, and uh, after the war in Ukraine, this hybrid war has taken a new turn, a new dimension. Uh, so in 2022, just last year, we have seen hundreds of bomb threats. Uh, we have seen the biggest cyber attacks uh, uh, ever uh, uh, that the, the country was ever subjected to. And then we saw these plots uh, to destabilize the country. We are therefore very, very grateful to our partners. Uh, who, uh, the European Union just last week announced that it will sanction a number of people who are working uh, with uh, um, uh, the oligarchs and uh, the Russian, uh, who have fled the country and the Russian Federation uh, to destabilize uh, democracy in Moldova. And uh, we are working within the country uh, to put a very strong um, defense against uh, such attempts. And is there a parallel situation in Transnistria to that which is taking place in Donbass right now in the Ukraine? Is there a sense that from Transnistria there could be some sort of uh, Russian movement? Is, is, is it at that point, you think? Uh, of course, uh, when we have Russian troops stationed illegally in the Transnistrian region, uh, we can never be sure or feel totally secure. But we have been able to maintain uh, a stable situation, um, and there is a balance. The difference uh, um, is that there is no active engagement, and we do not see a sign uh, of uh, a potential active engagement right now. But of course, uh, we are uh, monitoring the situation uh, very carefully, um, in, including in col collaboration with uh, our Ukrainian uh, partners. Understood. Madam Prime Minister, can I, can I look towards the future and maybe uh, ask you for something a little bit more optimistic uh, about the future of Moldova? And clearly, your passion for your country is obvious. Uh, Tell us what you would like to see Moldova become in, say, five years, 10 years, 20 years' time. Uh, in five and 10 years, I want to see Moldova um, being peaceful and really uh, working towards transformation of the lives of its citizens. Uh, we have a lot of economic growth to achieve. We want to have investments in Moldova. We want to have tourists. Uh, we want to have good jobs with uh, productivity, high wages, uh, and we want people to uh, realize their potential. I think uh, in these days, often we forget what the European way of life means, but it means that each individual is free to realize their potential in a country that is democratic, that respects human rights, that respects individual freedom, that has the rule of law, it has checks and balances, and has a model that brings not only prosperity, but a prosperity 
based on these uh, values. People listening, um, Madam Prime Minister, might think that you're speaking like a dreamer, but can I remind them that you're an economist uh, by trade? So all your, all your words are backed up by a reasoning which is, which is there. Can you give us a sense of what you think the economic potential of your country is? Yes, we uh, are facing quite a difficult situation uh, because of the war. So in 2022, we had uh, a profound stagflation. Uh, we lost 6% of GDP and inflation at, the, at its highest reached 35%. And we really needed uh, financial assistance uh, to uh, support us in an expansionary fiscal policy. Um, but, but at the same time, we have... Uh, despite these multiple overlapping crises, in one year managed to diversify our 100% dependency on energy resources from Russia, and we were able to buy from alternative sources. We were the, the first country to use the Transbalkanic pipeline in reverse flow. Uh, we were the first country to use the Greece-Bulgaria interconnector, the new interconnector. Uh, and uh, we uh, also managed to uh, progress on uh, indicators like freedom of press, uh, uh, the uh, corruption, uh, the perception of corruption uh, has uh, uh, reduced. Uh, so um, uh, we are now seeing a potential uh, because of uh, um, nearshoring, because of uh, uh, this, the green transition that we are seeing. So. Uh, we think that we have a lot of potential in high-value agriculture, in the IT uh, sector, uh, in uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, in uh, um, uh, a number of uh, um, sectors that um, uh, could bring jobs and prosperity to Moldova. And we very much hope that even though we have uncertainty in the region, we will be able to attract investors into our country to uh, create new jobs and to use the opportunities uh, that are arising with us getting closer to the single market.